What is going on, guys? This is KNasty3090 here. Welcome back to an episode of the Miami Marlins franchise, episode 17, year 2025. Last year, we won 114 games. I don't think we're going to be a better team. Um, we didn't lose Brian Anderson, but we have Crowell, who's an elite fielder. We'll see how much he hits, but I'm excited to see what Tippett does. Like, I think this dude might hit like 350 this year with like 35 to 40 home runs. I wouldn't be shocked if he does something like that. We have Seager, Dahl, Naylor, Zarate, Barreto, and Ciarte in there. Pitching, Jay Groom jumped into the rotation. Uh, we're going, uh, I want to actually change one thing there. We added some relievers to the uh, team because we made some changes there. We're actually going to have a bunch of extra draft picks this year too, so I'm excited. Let's get into the season, see how we do. We're off to the best start. All right, and let's just make sure the minor leagues are all set, and we are going to call up. Perez. Who did they call up instead? Um, Pete Cowan. We don't need you. Okay. So, there we go. We have a very full bullpen. And I'll make sure Gonzalez is a closer, so we'll have him there. Hudson's a starter. We want him in there. Our 2-0 is... Bynum is a reliever. Eason is a closer, so I'll put him here. And let's make sure the minor leaguers are the big ones are playing. Like Knight. Well, he's older, but we'll put him in over area. Eh. I'll put him at DH, I guess. Why not? All right. Let's continue with the season. Like I said, since we lost some players in free agency, we're going to have a couple extra draft picks. Um... We are going to have the last pick in the first round because we won 114 games last year. All right, let's make sure they didn't screw up the lineup when Zarate got injured. Doesn't look like they did. All right, let's continue with the season. Not to the best start, but we're going to get hot. Like I said at the end of last video, um, I don't, I know we're not going to have more wins than we did last year. Alex Jackson's out for one to two months. That's our backup catcher, so we need to call up a new one. We're going to call up, I guess, Will Banfield since he's on the 40-man. No one else is. But, like, my goals for this season, realistically, win the division at least. I mean, if we make the playoffs, that's, that's the most important thing. But <laughs> Banfield's out for one to two weeks. Jeez, I'm just going to let it roll, whatever. Corey Seager's out for one to two months with a torn finger ligament. All right, well, we got that kid... If Banfield can play, uh, Pausen, or, yeah, whatever. So he's going to play, and we're going to just move everyone down. Corwell's in 222 with three home runs. That's actually not awful. If you can hit me like 15 home runs with that defense, that's not bad. We're having a little bit of injury issues. That's not ideal. All right. And then when Seager comes back, we'll just move everyone up. <laughs> Make it nice and easy. Wow, Dawson 371 with 11 home runs? What are we, in May? Look, beginning of May? Or the end of May. Okay, but still. Painfield's back. Seager's still for one to two months. Jackson's probably back soon. All right, the draft. So we have the 30th pick in round one. Look at this. We got four extra picks. So the 31st pick, the 43rd, 44th, and 45th pick. Round two, we have the 19th pick. Compensatory, three more. Three more there. And I think that's it. We have so many draft picks. We should have a good draft. We should have a good draft. Um, Mark Comer? Not bad. Might take him. Yeah, I'll take him. Oh, this doesn't look like a ton of great options, unfortunately. These guys are older. He's 20 as a project, but injury risk high, but whatever. We'll take him. Yeah, this isn't the best year to have all these draft picks, it looks like. Like, 24 years old? Ugh. There's a closer. I hate taking closes early, but we have so many picks that I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, man, look at the 75 potentials, I guess. Another closer. A center fielder. 
Wow, an amazing arm. Not much else. A second baseman. He has a great arm. Um, the catcher. Good contact. Let's take the catcher. And I actually might just take some shots in the dark, unfortunately. Like this, I highly doubt he's that good because everything's at an 80 except power. We have so many picks. But, ah, oh, damn, this sucks. Like, we have all these picks and there's just nothing really there. I guess I'll take the starter who's 24. He could be ready in a year or two. I just hope he has a high potential. He's a trade chip. Um, I'll probably... There's a couple catchers here. Dick Wolf and Ernesto Portillo. Portillo's, I've heard, is really good. And he's a lower injury risk, so we'll take him. Uh, not the best per nines. Chavis has good per nines. I like him. Adolfo Chavis. Again, these are shots in the dark, but I like him more than a lot of these guys who are here. I guess the shortstop will take since he's 19 as a project. And then we have like one or two more picks, I think. Again, I'm going to take some shots in the dark. Walt Gomez, really good per nines. We'll take him. And that's our max draft picks. All right. I want to see what team took uh, Dick Wolf. And we'll see if he's good or not. Because I was going to take him next. Even though he has an eye injury risk. As a backup catcher, maybe, I was thinking. Still haven't seen him get picked yet. Did he not get picked? I don't know. All right. Let's see how we did. Eh. There's a, it's not the best. I knew going once we saw what was there. But, I mean, Comer's not bad. That's an 87 potential. 65 overall. Cabrera, 78 potential. I mean, we'll see. That can change. Jody Hobson has a 74 potential. His overall is good at 70. Maybe he outperforms that. Salinas, 89 potential. I mean, I actually really like him. Look at that contact, that good vision. Durability is not bad. You hope the fielding improves. But he's 21 years old, 53 overall with 89 potential. That's not bad. Smallwood, a shot in the dark. Unfortunately, a 74 potential. I mean, these could go up. He's a 67 overall, which is nice. Monk, he's 24 years old. So he's older, 69 overall, which is not, it's nice, but with a 75 potential, not so nice. Portillo, actually, this isn't a bad pick. He's only a C potential at 74, but he's a 72 overall and he's only 19. I mean, you take a look at that. His fielding is good. Connick's good. I think he's a great backup catcher. That's what I think. I see this. He can be our backup catcher literally next year. So he'll be cheap. Adolfo Chavis, he's a 78 potential. Castro is shortstop. He's 19 years old, 61 overall, 81 potential. And Walt Gomez, 78. I just don't feel like this was a great draft. Like at the top, there were probably some picks, but we had the 30th pick, and then after that. So Richard Wolf had an 82 potential. Great conduct first left, but 23 durability. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, ooh, wow. 99 potential. So, I mean. Oh, another 99. Hey, his name's Kevin. That's my name. All right, so we'll continue with the season. How are we doing? We win the division by a game. So let's get hot, boys. Bears is up for the few days. Same with Zarate. Bears is back. Zarate is back. Let's make sure they didn't screw all this crap up. They... No, I mean, Tiffitt's only hitting 285 with 13 home runs. Kind of disappointed by that. Zarate, though. What the F? He has 15 home runs? His potential and his overall is going up. He's in 314. He's like one of the best players in baseball. Crowell's in 252 with six home runs in June. But that defense, I'm not upset with that. Um, and we saw Zarate's potential is going up. What is it now? Please be a 99. 98. And Barrios is pitching well. Sixto's kind of struggling. Alfon <laughs> Six, nine, four ERA. Alcantara's been good. Jay Groom's been great. Tyler's been good as a long man. Uh, bullpen's been pretty all right. Except for Irizarry is actually struggling, which is funny. Um, maybe hey, if he struggles a little bit this year, he's cheaper. Hudson's pitching all right. Arturo is pitching great. He's only 20. He's a 77 overall with 89 walks per nine. So that is very, he's a very intriguing prospect. 
Schnell, third baseman, is actually not doing too, too bad. Evan White, 301 average. I just hope his potential goes up. And Luis Diaz, who last year was in the majors. He had 11 home runs. This year he's in the minors. Which I might call him up. Because we need another body. So let's call him up. We'll call this guy up to AAA to take his spot. All right, there we go. Let's get hot, boys. I like to go on like a 15 game. Oh, that didn't. It's not going to happen. Mariners interested in a trade. Dalton Varsho, he's usually a B potential. He's a C. I mean, we actually are all set at catchers now. Um, Jackson, he's got one more year on our team control. We got Hammond, who's like a prospect, but the guy we just drafted, is gonna, I think he's like a great backup catcher, in my opinion. Right, yeah, we are really struggling this year. I mean, we're still 20 games over 500, but I just feel like we are a wagon. All right, we have one too many players, so I'm going to send down Banfield, unless he's just hitting so well, 123. He can go back to AAA, work down there. Let's continue with the season. And we'll see who uh, made the all-star team. Zarate did, I know that. We're five and a half up on the Braves, so that's good. All-star voting, so Barrios. And that's it from our rotation. Irizarry made it. That's it from our bullpen. Zarate, yeah, when you hit 324 with 19 home runs, a 413 on base, 607 slugging, OPS over 1,000. The only problem with him is his durability, but jeez. Kinzer, Bart, Olsen, Lamb, Bell, Donovan Bryant, who's a stud, and 346 with 14 home runs. Uh, no one here, no one there. Dahl made it, 338 with 19 bombs. Let's see in the American League, any familiar names. I really want to see if, uh, this name sounds familiar, but yeah, we didn't have him. If uh, Brian Anderson made it. He did, 312, 12 home runs, very good year. OPS of 858, that's down a little bit, but still very good year. Brandon Nemo. <laughs> Freaking Nemo. And that's it. Let's continue with the season. Hopefully we get no injuries. But if we do, or if they're big, please happen before the trade deadline. Seager's back. Awesome. Just slide him right up. That really helps out this lineup. The problem is, he's been injured the last two years. He is so important to this team, though. I, I'm not going to just like trade him because of it, but... When he's a free agent in a year or two, um, we have to keep that into somewhat of a consideration that he has been injury prone. All right, we're gonna send down some. I'm probably gonna send down a reliever who's not pitching great. We have so many. They've all been pitching pretty darn solid. I guess Roger Ramirez, even though he's an 87 overall, um, but ZRA is almost four. Because then we don't have a backup. Oh, we have Kalenic who's not for that. Actually, we have... We'll probably send down... Well, Diaz can play a bunch of different positions. Hmm. I'll send down Ramirez, I guess. Well, there's something... He's not going to pitch down there. I'll just send down. I'll send down the worst of the two Diaz. As you know, he'll, he'll clear waivers. Um... He can play a different bunch of positions, but he's not really hitting great, and we just got swept. All right, come on. Bury us out for a few days. He's back. So we're at the trade deadline. We're seven up. I am now thirsty. I didn't try to do that on purpose. <laughs> we're winning the division pretty comfortably. Um, Brewers have two less wins, so it's really just between us and the Brewers for the best record. Take a look at top prospects. Ponder's number one. Eller and Hudson, he's an 83 overall. Jeez, he's like, guys, call me up. Colvin is now up to 14. Tommy Hammond's up to 18. He's becoming a really big prospect. Schnell, who's out, he's hurt. He's at 21. Evan White, I want his potential goal because he looks really promising. He might take over for Josh Naylor. The only problem is he's kind of like Naylor that he can't field, but he'll be cheap. If Naylor becomes expensive, 
Gonzalez a closer, McKnight shortstop. Um, how is Alfonso's pitching better? Hudson's pitching all right. Arturo is pitching good. Um, but yeah, I guess if there's going to be an injury, we're going to have to fix it from within. Just a few days for Barreto. All right, we just took three out of four from Milwaukee. That helps us for best record. Now, are we going to win over... Uh, my question is, are we going to win over 100 games? We're currently at 83 wins. Probably not. We're 93 and 65. Are, is anyone close to us? Four and a half of the Braves, but they ran out of time. 95 and 67. Not the best year, but we won the division... And we won, or we had the best record in the National League. So, you know, at the end of the day, obviously you want to win as many games as you can, but 95 wins, one less than the Twinkies. Take a look at some awards and how they did. Barrios was amazing. 287 ERA, a whip of .98. Earned his money. The last three years, his ERA's been under three, whip under two the last two years. Six, though, he did struggle to 4 3 ERA. He's still not making a ton of money. Alfonso 448, Alcantara 518, and Groom with 46. So that was where our issue was. Our starters struggled other than Barrios. Tyler was great as a long man. His potential went up and his overall. And he might eh, he's got one more year making cheap money, but 100 innings at 273 ERA is great. Ramirez pitched well. He's I kept him up and he has a 315 ERA. He might be like him or Joe Keith are really gonna be like the next closers. Uh, Ramirez, his potential went down, which is a shame, but Claudio did well as a lefty for us. Maxwell pitched, okay, not great. Williams, same thing. Joe Keith, yeah, he's going to be our closer next year. Um, and he's got some time left, unless Irizarry becomes more of a cheaper option. His ERA was higher this year for sure, but still very solid. And CRT at 314 in his last year with the team. No, he's got one more year after this, excuse me. Uh, 314, 17 home runs, 24 stolen bases, war of 6.6. He's been a great piece for us. Tip it. All right, 312, 38 home runs. So he improved in average slightly, on base slightly, slugging percentage quite a bit. Added 10 home runs. He's now a 99 overall. Pretty good draft pick. OPS of nearly 1,000. A war of only three because his feeling's not great and he's playing first base. Seager. He only played 116 games. Last year it was 129. But before that, it was like 161, 162, 160, 161. And then the year he actually got hurt in real life. So he's been like durable. And he has 98 durability. So I think the last year was just kind of fluky. He still slugged over 500. So it's still not bad. War of 6.4. Dahl, 319 average. He hit 33 bombs. Good job resigning him. Josh Naylor. He hit 283 with 20. We should look at the uh, National lineup. Josh Naylor hit 283, 24 home runs. So average was the same, but he added 10 bombs. Slugging went up on base, slightly went down. His war was only 1.9, which actually went down. But still a good year. Zarate, okay, yeah, his average did go down to 288, but he hit 24 home runs. Also, still 15 bags. The problem is, like, his durability is pretty garbage, too. I mean, he plays 144 games, but only 452 at bats. So he plays a lot of games because he pinch hits, but 452 at bats compared to a guy like Tippett. Actually, Tippett has bad durability, but he had 529 at bats. Enciarte has good durability, 652 at bats. So because of his poor durability, he had 200 less at bats. That's a lot, but still a very important bat. Barreto, 250 average. That went down. 14 home runs. I mean, he's been pretty solid as a second baseman. He's got two years, one more year after this of making that cheap money. After that, we're going to let him go. But he's been a very serviceable player, making $3 million a year. Cruel actually had a very solid year. He's an 89 overall now. He hit 241, which I kind of expected. But 18 home runs is not bad. Uh, 322 on base. So he did walk quite a bit for how low his average was. Still 13 bags. The year before, I just saw this. He had one game. He hit one hit, and it was a double. So his average OPS, like, <laughs> everything... 1, 1,000, 1, 1,000, 1, 2,000, 3,000. Because um, of his elite defense, his war was 4. So, let's take a look at awards. 
We'll look at uh, Framo Reyes got MVP and Paul DeYoung. We'll look to see how Brian Anderson did. Barrios got Cy Young for the third straight year. And Nate Pearson. Acuna and Bo Bichette got batting titles. Uh, Bradley and Castillo got relievers of the year. Rookie of the year, uh, Rob Qu- uh, Crowell. So we got him. Seth Brown in the American League. Harper and Nemo. What gold gloves did we get? Probably third. Yelp, Crowell. Shorts up with Seager. Tyler O'Neal, really? Okay. Um, Drew Waters and Mookie Betts. Otani got Silver Sluggers. Arate did. And that's it. So let's see. Uh, Brian Anderson hit 304. 24, 308, 24 home runs, 367 on base. So that went down quite a bit. Slugging went down, but still a very good player. War of 6.7, so that went up. Nice to see him do well. Hopefully we don't have to play him in the playoffs. Top prospects. We have the number two prospect right behind Ponder. Those guys are going to be tied together. He's like... And then Hammond's now at 11. And McKnight jumped up. Holy cow. To 12. Colvin jumped up to 13. Oh, man. We got some... I got some decision, decisions. Schnell. He's up to 19. Evan White. Potential didn't go up, but he improved quite a bit. He's now an 81. Uh, like... <sighs> I'm just thinking, like, oh, this is tough. Our pitchers struggled, but they're all, like, locked up long-term. Like, Sixto, Alfonso. I mean, Alfonso is such a team-friendly deal. Alcantara, $9 million. I actually might move on from him in the offseason with the ERA North of 5. And then go with Hudson. Or even Arturo. Like, they're both, like, so, Hudson needs to play in the majors next year. He's been healthy every year, which was good. I was worried about that. But he doesn't. I've never seen him on the DL. So, I think next offseason... Alcantara will probably be gone. Sixto will probably keep because his contract's still very good. But, like, I legitimately think Arturo would pitch just as well because of his walks per nine. But he can be, like, an option. Tyler's a great long man. Uh, man, this team's in a good spot. And our budget is pretty good. Next year, we got a lot of guys locked up. I think we're not going to be able to keep Irizarry. Um, But Berrios, Dahl, Seager, and Ciarte, unless they have player options. Which I don't think they do. Oh, Seager does. So Seager might walk. He probably will with that backloaded contract. We might actually have to say goodbye to Seager and more think about it because I don't know if we could afford the $35 million or $30 million contract. That's an extra $8 million from what he'd be making. I don't know. And the thing is, I'm just thinking ahead. Like, Arias is not bad. McKnight jumped up a quite a bit. His potential went to an A. We've had pausing for a while. Now, he's struggled. We got him in the Rule 5. But McKnight, he's now a 90 potential. So, look, we have several really good options. I think even if we do keep them, we got to figure out which ones to keep, which ones to get rid of out of these three, and then trade the ones we don't want. Um, Evan White, I think, will be... Uh, I don't know. Like, we got guys... All these center fielders. Um, Kalenic sound 82 overall. He's not bad. He might be Enciarte's replacement in a year or two unless he gets too expensive because he's up for arbitration next year. Oh, he's going to get too expensive. Damn it. Well, that's a, that's a future problem for a future video. This year, we did quite well. Playoffs will be the next episode. I'll see you then, boys. Please drop a like if you did enjoy this. Sub if you're new. I'll talk to you all later. Take it easy. Peace.